Hey everyone, Daniel here from Next Level Life, and today we're going to be talking about the differences between passive and active investing, as well as exploring how much of a difference this one choice can make in your net worth by the time your retirement rolls around. So what exactly is passive investing? Well, passive investing is an investing strategy where the investor adopts a buy and hold strategy as opposed to making regular trades. Oftentimes, when people talk about passive investing, they're actually talking about index investing. And index investing is exactly what it sounds like it is. It's where you pick up one of the indices to track, and you basically have gain when the market goes up and take losses when the market goes down. Pretty simple. Common indices that are tracked would be the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones Industrial Average, though there are several others. And the nice thing about index investing is it's usually very cost-effective, in comparison to active investing anyway, because the fund does not have to pay a manager to analyze what's going on in the market at any given time and have him or her trying to figure out which stocks are going to have the biggest gains and which ones should be sold out every single day. Because again, the goal of index investing is to just match the market over the long haul. Active investing, on the other hand, takes more of a hands-on approach that requires someone to act in the role of manager, and again, try to find a way to beat the market by taking full advantage of the short-term stock price fluctuations. This can work out very well. For example, when Apple dropped down to less than $60 a share in 2013, managers around the world were able to take advantage of that, and now Apple sits at around $150 a share, at least as of this recording, and that means that over the course of just a couple of years, someone who had invested in Apple at around $60 a share would have more than doubled their money. Of course, it can also go the other way with a stock being picked up when it's at a high point because the manager thinks it's going to continue to go up, but then it ends up going down and the investor loses money. So active investing requires confidence that whoever is managing the portfolio will know exactly when the right time to buy and sell is, and it requires them to be right more often than wrong. But of course, the big question is, which one makes you more money? Now you'd think that a professional manager's capabilities would trump that of a basic index fund because they have extensive knowledge, expertise, and experience in the field of investing. However, more often than not, the opposite is actually true. Now I do want to point out that when it comes to investing, you can find numbers that prove just about any point that you want to make. It's just the nature of the beast when you've got so many years of data to draw from. However, it does seem that more often than not, passive investing wins out over active investing in the long run. And there have been tons of studies over the course of decades that have proven this to be the case. Turns out that only a small percentage of actively managed funds ever do better than passive index funds. In fact, in an article from CNBC that I'll link to in the description below if you want to check it out for yourself, found that between March of 2000 and September of 2016, only about 30% of the actively managed large cap funds outperformed the S&P 500 over the course of any three year period during that time frame. And of course, of those that did outperform the market during that time frame, only a third managed to beat the market the following year. So over a four year period, it was obviously even tougher. And only 13% managed to do it over a five year period. And just in case you're wondering, over a six year period, only 5% of actively managed funds outperformed the market. That is insane. And the percentages don't change much if you look at mid cap or small cap or even the international or emerging market funds. That means that even if you're in your early 60s and just starting to invest for retirement, you've got roughly a 1 in 20 chance of beating the market between now and the day you reach your retirement age if you only use actively managed funds. But how can that be? Because most of the professional managers went to school for this, and many of them have been on the job for many years. And it's the job of an active manager to make you more money than you would have investing passively yourself. So shouldn't they be able to do their job more than 5% of the time? And the answer is yes. So why can't they? Well, this is primarily because none of us really knows what's going to happen in the market a year from now or two years from now or heck, even just a few days from now for that matter. And even with all the analysis and expertise in the world, the process of trying to time the market is oftentimes still little more than guesswork. As I mentioned earlier, active investing can also be very expensive, with expense ratios often hovering around the 1.4% mark, compared to the 0.6% average for passive investing funds. 
months. To put it simply, this means that for an actively managed portfolio to beat a passive portfolio, the active portfolio has to outperform the passive portfolio by at least 0.8% every single year just to break even. And not only is that not very easy to do, it can also make a pretty significant difference in your retirement fund. And I'll get into that in just a minute, but I want to finish explaining the concepts first. So some other advantages to passive investing are, as I already mentioned, the very low fees associated with it because no one's having to analyze stocks and try and pick which ones are going to go up and which ones are going to go down, so the overhead cost is significantly lower. But it's also very tax efficient, because it's usually a buy and hold strategy which means the capital gains taxes for each year were usually a little bit lower than it would be if you were actively trading. Now, this can be offset in an actively managed portfolio if you take advantage of some tax management strategies where you sell off investments that are losing money, but it's still worth noting because even if you do that, you're still probably going to have to fork over a little bit more money in transaction costs, at least if that's the kind of setup that your manager has and many of them are starting to move actually away from that business model, so here's to hoping that'll soon be a worry of the past. Now to this point in the video I've probably been sounding like a passive investing fanboy because, well, all I've done is praise it to this point. But that's not to say that it doesn't have its own disadvantages as well. Many people who favored active investing claim that passive investing is very limited, which admittedly is true. You're usually limited to a specific index, or some other predetermined set of investments, like if you're using the dogs of the Dow strategy, for instance. And as a result, there's not a whole lot of variance in your investing. And with a buy and hold strategy like this, you're kind of locked into whatever your holdings are, no matter what's happening in the market. So a down year could be extra painful. Some also feel that the returns can be very small in comparison because, by definition, you're matching the index. So you're almost never going to beat the market. And I feel like I've done nothing but bash active investing so far in this video, and it makes it seem like it has no merits of its own, which is of course untrue. Some advantages to active investing are the flexibility that it offers you, because since active managers aren't required to follow a specific index, they can find those diamond in the rough stocks, if you will, and get some really big returns, especially in the short period of time. And active managers can also hedge their bets using various techniques such as short sales or put options, and they're able to sell specific stocks or get out of certain sectors of the market if the risks become too high. And that can save investors a lot of money by avoiding losses. Or cost them big time by missing out on a sudden gain that nobody saw coming. Again, it's like looking into a crystal ball. More often than not, you really just don't know. And now coming back to the idea of expense ratios, let's see how much of a difference that 1.4% average for actively managed portfolios make compared to the 0.6% average of a passive investment. Let's take John for example. He's been investing $100 a month in nothing but actively managed funds since he was 25 years old. Good for him. He's now 65 and getting ready to retire. He's averaged a 6% rate of return over his investing lifetime. What would be his net worth today? Well, he started with nothing, invested $100 a month for 40 years, and got a 6% rate of return. Of course, we have to take off the 1.4% expense ratio that he had to pay out every year, so effectively, out of that 6% rate of return, he's taking home 4.6% of it after expenses. And when you punch those numbers into a compound interest calculator, you come out with a net worth of $134,839.84 at age 65. Now let's assume that Jane did the same thing over the same period of time, except she invested in nothing but passive investments. And I know this is a little bit hypothetical, but the point here is just to illustrate the difference between expense ratios over a long period of time. So we're going to say that she also averaged a 6% rate of return over those same 40 years, and also, like I said, invested $100 a month, just like John. The only difference is that she had an average expense ratio of 0.6% due to the fact that passive investments are usually less costly. So we punch the same numbers into the calculator. She starts at zero, invests $100 a month for 40 years with a 6% average rate of return. We take away the 0.6% for the expense ratio that she had to pay out every year, giving her effectively a 5.4% rate of return after expenses. And we come out with a net worth of $164,598.22.
Now that might not seem like much, but when you divide 164,598 by 134,839, you find that Jane actually has 22% more in her retirement account than John does, even though they got the same rate of return and they invested in the same amount of money over the same period of time. Jane still ends up with almost $30,000 extra to her name. And the difference only gets larger, of course, the more money they put in. Say, for example, both Jane and John invested $500 a month over those same 40 years and still got that 6% rate of return. Jane would end up with just a hair under $823,000 by the time she reaches age 65, whereas John would end up with $674,000 by the time he reaches retirement. Which means that now, Jane has almost $150,000 more than John. That's crazy, right? What could you do today if you had an extra $150,000 in your pocket? And what if we say that the market did a little bit better over the course of those 40 years? Say instead of 6%, the market averaged a 7% rate of return, with everything else staying the same. John and Jane still invest $500 a month for 40 years, but this time it's at a 7% rate of return. Jane ends up with $1,062,942.44 at age 65. And John, he ends up with $865,715.64, which is a difference of just under $200,000. So bottom line, expense ratios do make quite a difference, but as we've learned in this video, they're not the only thing that you need to focus on when choosing an investment strategy. Because despite the heated debate between people who believe that passive investments are the best way to go and people who believe that active investments are the best way to go, it really comes down to what you're looking to do as an investor. If you're young and you're looking to be in it for the long haul and you're willing to ride the waves of the market, passive investing, more often than not, is probably the better way to go. The expenses are less, it's usually more tax efficient, and if you're able to ride the market, even during the downswings, you're usually going to win out over the long term compared to an active investor. However, if you have fun trading and analyzing stocks and you don't want to be locked into certain investments when the market's going to go down, then perhaps active investing would be your cup of tea. But that'll about do it for me. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did or if you learned something, be sure to like and subscribe. I've got a lot more of these finance videos coming out in the near future, as well as some more book summaries and other fun stuff. But with that being said, thanks for watching, and have a great day.